there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a spoiler free review for The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. The Near Witch is a young adult standalone fantasy and it was actually V.E. Schwab's first publication and I had heard that it had actually been taken out of print. It was published I believe in 2011 and it just didn't perform as well as the publisher had hoped but once V.E. Schwab published more things and became more popular and gained an audience they decided to republish this book and V.E. Schwab is one of my favorite authors. I have a whole video on why you should read her. I'll link that up in the cards if you're interested in checking it out. And this is one of the only books of hers that I haven't read. And I didn't know it was a young adult. When I picked it up from my bookstore, it was actually in the adult section. But as soon as I started reading it, I'm like, this is definitely young adult. Our main character is 16 years old. Um, it, it reads like young adult. It's not immature and I feel like this the themes of this book are probably on the older end of YA and I'll talk about that in a second. And there are definitely some disturbing things in this book so I feel like it would um, appeal to any type of audience. But before I go ahead and get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box below for links to all of my social media, my Buddy Read Discord, and my Patreon, where you can be entered into winning book giveaways from me. In The Near Witch, we follow a 16-year-old girl named Lexi, and she lives in this really small village known as Near. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's located on these just sprawling moors with nothing around. And the village has been around for a long, long time. And everybody knows each other. They don't like outsiders. They kind of keep to themselves, that kind of thing. And at one time, magic was more prevalent or accepted in this village. There are two witches that live on the outskirts of Nier. And at first, or they used to be like more trusted and revered. But as time has gone on, and these witches are kind of like immortal. But as time has gone on, people have started to mistrust the witches and not put so much stake in connecting to the earth and magic and things like that. Lexi lives with her mother and her little sister who's five and her father had passed away and she talks a lot about her father. Um, he's almost like a character in the book just of how because of how much she references him and tells his stories to her little sister and all of that we get like a really good picture of her father and her father was way more accepting of magic and the witches and the witches had a good relationship with her father and therefore they are more accepting of Lexi and nice to her and, and that type of thing and ever since her father died her his brother her uncle Otto has kind of like stepped into their life as a, a male authority figure but he's really nothing like her father he's very um He's very, I don't want to say mean, because he's not mean, but he is very, very strict. And he has like a certain idea in his head about how Lexi should be and act. And anytime she deviates from that, he is critical. And he really was not a likable character. And V.E. Schwab could have made that storyline way worse. He made me angry so many times in this book. And while I did understand where he was coming from, he was just trying to protect his nieces. Um, he just was not a likable character. But the inciting incident in this book is that a stranger arrives in Nier, but no one actually sees him at daytime. They just see him at night, and there are multiple people claiming they saw this person. And as soon as he arrives, children start being taken from homes, and everybody blames this stranger, and they start hunting him. And Lexi meets the stranger. She calls him Cole, and we learn some things about him, and she knows in her heart that he is not evil and that he did not take these children. And he also enlists the help of these two witches. And the two, Lexi and Cole, try to unravel the mystery of who exactly is taking these children. And it is all rooted in the fable of the Near Witch. So the Near Witch used to live on the outskirts of Near, and she ended up being murdered by the townspeople, you know, centuries ago, um, because they feared her and they accused her of something that she didn't do. So she was never properly buried and her spirit kind of haunts the moors or is able to haunt the moors if the condition is right. So this book, I will say, is the perfect perfect fall read. Victoria Schwab, I love her prose. It is gorgeous. The way that she describes the moors, the wind, the magic, the forest. I was so immersed in this setting and I just felt like I was there just living the imagery. If you like atmospheric books, definitely pick this one up. It's got a dark, creepy forest. It's got dark, creepy witches. I will definitely say this is reminiscent of a dark fairy tale. If you like the Grimm's fairy tales, this just has those elements. 
Like I kind of hinted on earlier, this book really elicited from me a lot of emotions and most of them are indignation and anger. One of the things I really liked about this book was the theme of fear and how fear can actually guide our actions if we allow it to and, you know, fear of the unknown in general because we see that the original town people who killed the near witch feared her and they refused to see the truth. They just let fear guide their actions and their actions ended up leading to violence we kind of see that as a premonition or foreshadowing what's going to happen to Cole in this book because no one knows him. He's an outsider. People fear the unknown, so they just assume that he is capable of violence and evil because their fear is keeping them from seeing the truth or searching for the truth. So I thought that was such a mature theme. And there are definitely some disturbing ideas in this book about, you know, violence and killing and just for the sake of it, um, you know, almost like someone has to be a sacrifice for wrongs, even if they're not the right person, or even if the person who didn't commit the wrong, they still should be sacrificed. Um, so there's definitely a lot of like mature things that go into this book, especially because it's so short too. I felt like Lexi was a pretty good protagonist. She's definitely not gonna let anybody push her around. She's very determined. What I love is that she is able to see kind of past her fear and she is one that seeks the truth rather than like retreating from it. Um, so she was a good main character. I did feel like there was a lot of scenes where she was like sneaking out of her house and going out at night, um, you know, to, to find things. It, it was a lot of that, but I mean, she lives on a moor in the middle of nowhere, so where else is she gonna go? But there's like a lot of her sneaking out and finding things out and a lot of that. Um, as for my dislikes for this book, I think my main dislike comes um, with the climax. So there was a ton of buildup to, you know, the climax and what the truth was and uh, who was stealing these children and what they were doing with them and why. And then we get to like the conflict, the good versus evil kind of like duking it out and the climax just happens. Like it's just the one and done and over. <laughs> and it was just literally like that. Like there's no aftermath. Like it just was so quick. It was like two sentences. I was like, wait, that was it, it's over, it's done. And then it goes into like the falling action, the resolution, which were super, super quick. So I just, it was a little bit too quick for my taste. And that's another gripe I have with Gallant, one of her other books, I felt like the, she wrote it the same, same exact way. Um, so I just would have liked like a more fleshed out climax. And one of the things that I wasn't too keen on, but it didn't hurt the story at all, was the romance between Lexi and Cole. I mean, it's a YA. We know that a lot of times um, romances are thrown into young adults. Uh, books, I mean, books in general, not just YA. And then obviously there was like a third guy that was all into Lexi, but she didn't like him back. And then he got, you know, angry and jealous and mean about it, um, which isn't a plot line that I really, really like only because I felt like she, Victoria Schwab, tried to write Tyler, the antagonistic guy, kind of, kind of like a caricature. Like I'm sure that there are people like that that get very angry and jealous and mean, but never in my personal experience, I'm just speaking from my own, you know, life experiences, I've never been around someone like, that, someone like that or been in a relationship with someone like that. I mean, they weren't, Lexi and Tyler weren't even in a relationship, but he was like domineering and possessive and they weren't even together. And I don't know, I just felt like he was a bit extra and not really representative of like the normal man. And I think maybe she just did that on purpose to create a conflict. Um, but that character was an unlikable character. He made me very angry many times um, and he was written to be unlikable. Um, but I just, I've just never met a male like that in my life. Doesn't mean they don't exist, but I just didn't really see the point of writing him into the story like that. Anyway, so those are just a couple of the dislikes that I had. Um, all in all, I'm super glad that I read The Near Witch. I'm really glad that I was able to read more Victoria Schwab. I'm really happy to have more of her books in my collection. I do recommend it if you're looking for a fun, atmospheric read, if you're someone that really likes, you know, fairy tale-esque stories, especially dark ones. It's a great fall read. And I ended up giving The Near Witch three and a half out of five stars. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments if you've read The Near Witch and what you thought of it. And I will see y'all in another video soon. Goodbye.